You know there's something odd going on when the Pope is a German but the head of the central bank is an Italian. The old rules are being turned on their head. Germany rules the roost in Europe, but France is delivering the message. Like a pliant concubine hoping not to get shut out of the power bedroom. And the big question is whether the Germans have actually given up on the Greeks. Until recently, the Greeks believed that the Germans would blink first in this game of chicken. The Greeks could hit the nuclear option by threatening to leave the Euro, and the Germans would have to do a deal. But this has all changed. Greece is being sealed off, and the Germans seem to be prepared to call the Greeks bluff. The Greeks have been given an ultimatum. Do what Germany wants or sink. So they're looking now at years and years of austerity. But we know that austerity isn't working. Last year, the Greek economy shrank by 6%. With no growth, there's no tax. And there's a massive hole in the budget. And worse still, the country can't stand on its own two feet. For example, Greece has to borrow 10% of all its income just to cover its imports. And anyone who could have got their money out of Greece has done so already. Over half of young Greeks are out of work. And this can't go on. As the great American economist Herbert Steen once observed, when something can't go on forever, it will stop. But how will this stop? Leaving the euro must be an option for the Greeks even after getting all the second bailout money. Because if they stay in the euro and stick with all these cuts, they are looking down the barrel of years of indentured slavery to foreign creditors. Democracies simply don't work like this. So what are they going to choose? The uncertainty of a new drachma or the absolute certainty of 10 years of contraction. So that's the Greek view. But what does the world look like from Brussels and more importantly from Berlin? Since the crisis began, much of the talk was almost like the prodigal son about how the EU family would look after the delinquent Greeks. This was driven not so much by concern as fear because every time the Greeks looked like they would default, the banks panicked because a Greek default would prompt a wider default and banks' balance sheets would collapse. So the Greeks had the Germans and the French by the balls because the banks were up to their necks in dodgy Greek loans. So in order to force the Greeks' hand, the Germans and the French had to find a way of insulating their own banks against this Greek default. And this is where our Italian friend, the head of the European Central Bank, comes in. And this is why everything has changed. The ECB is now presiding over a massive cash-for-trash scheme, whereby the bust European banks give the central bank trash as collateral. And in return for this trash, the ECB gives them real cash. And real cash at 1% for three years. This is the banking equivalent of turning water into wine. Banks take this money that they have borrowed at 1% and they lend it back to insolvent governments at 6%. Now this looks great because the interest rates on government bonds fall and the assets on the bank's balance sheet seem to get bigger. So both governments and banks look stronger. But it's just a scam. It's more financial engineering giving the impression that all is okay while ignoring the real problem. So think about what is happening. We have insolvent banks lending to insolvent governments and we are calling it success. Not only is this a scam, it is an enormous scam because by the end of February, the ECB will lend one trillion euros to European banks. Now let's just get our heads around how much one trillion euros actually is. One trillion is one followed by 12 zeros. That is a huge amount of money. If you were to spend one million euros a day, it would take you 2,740 years to spend one trillion euros. The bus banks borrow this at 1%, they lend it to the government at 6%. The difference, which is 5%, is huge profit for the banks. But who pays it? You do. So the banks 
that are responsible for the crisis because of their reckless lending are being bailed out by the central bank and you, the taxpayer, pay the bill. Now, how does that make you feel? So not only are the banks being bailed out, but they will now be used to bash the Greeks into submission. With this one trillion of cash sloshing around the banking system, the Germans are reassured that there is enough liquidity to withstand the shock of a Greek exit from the Euro. So this forces the Greeks into a corner. Either Greece pays the banks, or it is on its own with a new drachma. But anybody who knows anything about economics understands that the issue is not that Greece will default or might default, it is that it won't be allowed default enough. The country is bust. This is why the Germans have changed their views. And this is now being described in Germany as the X strategy, like the X factor. And the X is the exit of the Greeks from the Euro. It's been openly discussed in Germany for the first time ever. The lesson from this Greek debt crisis is that to stay in the Euro, all European countries have to become more like Germany. But Greece will never be Germany. So what is the point? This German Europe is not what we all signed up to. In fact, it was sold as the opposite. A community of equal nations was the promise made this month 20 years ago at the signing of the Maastricht Treaty. This was supposed to bring the EU together. It has not. The EU countries have never been farther apart. Greece is about to be squeezed dry and the Euro is only being kept afloat by a massive cash for trash scheme where the banks are being bailed out and the average European citizen pays the bill. And for financial markets, the people who are benefiting from all this, the massive injection of liquidity will create another bubble in stocks and bonds. The profits will go directly into the pockets of hedge fund managers and the like, and then it will all blow up again and the average citizen will once again be asked to cough up. In this latest European crisis, the banks again get all the money they need while the citizen is being asked to take the pain and shoulder the burden. The markets are being inflated with cheap money, creating a bubble, while keeping a gun firmly to the heads of the people of first Greece, then Portugal, then maybe Ireland, and who knows where it's going to stop. And think about it. The banks, when they need money, get every single cent they need, one trillion euros. Yet, when the people ask to keep hospitals open and schools open, they are told, no, there's no cash around. Don't be fooled that this European debt story is over. It is not. In fact, politically, the interesting bit hasn't even started yet. <laughs>